Jeremy S. Cook here, and as you know, I really love experimenting with Arduino boards. You just plug the wires in, and the connections stay there with spring force. But wait, what's this? They just pull out. Very easily, in fact. If you want to make your project even nominally permanent, you need something better. Sure, there are solder and screw terminal options, but what I developed was this, an Arduino Uno enclosure with integrated strain relief. After my initial idea, I drew what I had in mind in DraftSight, an AutoCAD clone. On the sides where the wires would come out, I cut a 40,000th recession in order to allow the cover to fit on the top and the wires to come out the sides. Once the polycarbonate cover was tightened down, the idea was that it would be snug enough to hold the wires in place even with some force applied. Once the box and cover were designed, I set up my CNC router to cut out the creation. As seen here, it, it took a while for it to cut the uh, inner pocket cut, since it doesn't just cut the sides, it also has to take out the middle surface. After this was done, it was time for deburring on my handy bandsaw. And after this, it fit right into place. Actually, it didn't. The mistake I made here was that I didn't accommodate for the radius that a CNC cutting bit leaves on the corners of each internal cut it makes. This error was corrected with my trusty Dremel tool. I also tried to radius the middle and ended up knocking off the support between the USB and power connector. While it could have been glued, this didn't seem like a big deal and I simply discarded it. Finally, after modification, it did plug right in and it actually looks pretty good. To test the ability to hold wires, I inserted one here and applied pressure on the cover. It holds it well, so perhaps this project will work out after all. I drilled the cover to fit the enclosure on my manual mill. While this could normally be done on my router, I'm using 440 screws and didn't have a bit small enough for the operation. Once the pilot holes were drilled, I added CNA, aka super glue, to each one in order to reinforce the edges. When dry, I tap the holes as shown here. It was in spray paint time. Usually I go for the cheap stuff, but this paint actually works as a base and a top coat at the same time. And actually worked quite well. As seen here, I didn't paint the bottom because, well, I'm not gonna paint the bottom. Like, who really cares? It's just going to get scratched and leave residue everywhere anyway. I plugged in a NeoPixel strip and tightened down the cover. It actually looks quite nice in black, and being able to see into the enclosure is certainly a nice feature. Once it was tight, I could lightly yank on the wires and even hold up the entire enclosure with it. Pretty cool! The strip works as it should, and I added a 10mm LED inside. Also, note the hole I left for the reset button. I can't say I use it that much, but it's nice to have in case you can't easily unplug the board. I'm not sure how I'll use this enclosure, but for now, I'm going to call it a successful project. Thanks for watching, I hope you'll give it a like or even subscribe! And if you enjoy these videos, check out the Creativity Podcast, where Max Maker and I discuss the intersection of art and engineering. Puppy Puppy here, and as Jeremy's only childhood friend, as one of Jeremy's many childhood friends, I just want to say that I endorse this channel and the Creativity Podcast 100%. Not that I listen to it, I'm still trying to figure out how to use my Zoom MP3 player. Come on, don't look at me that way. In dog hen puppet years, I'm nearly 250 years old. So the fact that I'm still even around is amazing. Anyway, back to the toy box.